everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is, wherever you are, welcome once more to another video podcast of PNT Live. Sometimes political news time, sometimes porn news today, sometimes porn law news. All depends, but tonight I think that PNT Live will encompass a bit of all three of those websites. I'm your hostess, Alex Mayers, and just give me a moment while I bring up the court case files that I want to review this evening. A court case filed against the adult entertainment industry's um, probably the worst terrorist, criminal stalker, criminal extortionist that the adult entertainment industry has ever seen. An individual known as Donnie Long, aka Donald Carlos Sion. But what's ironic about this particular case is that this case also brings in the um, one of the adult entertainment industry's um, prominent attorneys, a corrupt individual known as Mark Randazza of Randazza Legal Group. Apparently, Donald Carlos Sion, AKA Donnie Long, he never stopped attacking people, trying to extort them, bullying them, stalking them, doxing them. He never stopped by creating and then later um, profiting off the hate crime known as Porn WikiLeaks. Since his departure from sex work and it's questionable as to whether or not the male prostitute known as Donnie Long has ever ceased participating in sex work. He has gone on to criminally stalk, criminally dox, and criminally attempt to extort and terrorize quite a few other parties. The operators and owners of Minivids, for example, the operators and owners of the Daily Beast, and most recently, the operators and owners of a small recreational vehicle park in the Sarasota, Florida area known as Sun and Fun RV, or maybe I should say Sun in Fun RV Resort. And just so that you all know, I am not involved in this case in any way, shape or form. I'm not in communication with any of the parties of this case. Um, I would advise, however, the plaintiff's apparent attorney, an individual who appears to be known publicly as Brian Chase, to go ahead and um, start some sort of a legal case against Sion yourself, because it does seem that he has purchased your legal name or your professional name as a domain. He's been trying for months to silence me through courts. It ain't gonna happen. I guess he forgot about the US Constitution and the First Amendment. He initiated contact with me. He libeled me. He threw shit at me first. I have every right to do it back to him. But see, he's one of these libtards that thinks he can dish it out and he can't and he doesn't have to take it back. And consider Sion's history of doing that. I'm pretty sure that you could easily regain control of that domain or attain control of that domain directly from um, WIPO, from the uh, people who control the internet, because he does have that history. And let's see, this is from the uh, circuit court of the 12th Judicial Circuit in and for Sarasota County, Florida Civil Division. Does it show the case number? Yes. Case number 820CV01896 TB, TPB rather, dash AAS. It, this was filed August 14th of 2020. The plaintiff's SNF property LLC doing business as Sun and Fun RV Resort versus Donald Sion, AKA Donnie Long, and Nantita Sion, AKA Nan Sion, AKA Nanny Keys. They probably should have also added AKA Heather Deep. Complaint. Plaintiff, SNF Property LLC, doing business as Sun and Fun RV Resort, 
including its employees, agents, and representatives, collectively the plaintiff, by and through the undersigned counsel hereby sues defendants Donald Carlos Sion, aka Donnie Long, and Nantita Sion, aka Nan Sion, aka Nanny Keys, collectively the defendants, and alleges the following. Here's the accusations. Number one, this is an action for injunctive relief and money damages which exceed $30,000 exclusive of, of attorney's fees, costs, and interest. Number two, plaintiff is a foreign limited liability company authorized to transact business in Florida and the owner of Sun and Fun RV Resort, the community, a recreational via vehicle park in Sarasota, Flo Florida County, or Sarasota, Sarasota County, mouthful. Number three, this court has subject matter jurisdiction pursuant to Florida statute 26.012. Number four, defendants are approved tenants and reside in a recreational vehicle or trailer on a lot located in the community at, and it gives the address. Number five, venue is proper as plaintiffs causes of action accrued in Sarasota County, Florida. And that point number five is important because Mark Randazza of Randazza Legal Group attempted to move this case into federal court, but that does not appear to have worked out, okay? And since he attempted to, to do that, he has removed himself from the case. And it kind of makes you wonder, did he remove himself from the case due to his current involvement in the um, NFL Washington dispute against um, NFL Washington team owner Daniel Snyder. I just recently did a podcast about that. I suspect so, but let's continue. Number six, recently, and these are the general allegations. Recently, plaintiff informed the defendants that their boat could not be parked on the lot via a boat notice, okay? Specifically, it could not be parked on the grass and the defendants needed to arrange for alternative storage for their boat. Reasonable request. Number seven, in response to plaintiff's request, the defendants maliciously initiated an online smear campaign against the plaintiff, its employees, agents, and representatives, and other tenants within the plaintiff's community. And at this point, also the plaintiff's legal counsel, Brian Chase. Specifically, the defendants have targeted Sun Communities Incorporated as the parent company of the plaintiff, the community, someone who is the assistant property manager of the community, someone who is president of the plaintiff's parent corporation. I'm not naming those people because they don't need to be doxxed any further than they already have been. Brian Chase as the plaintiff's counsel and managing attorney of Atlas Law, um, the property manager of the community, a resident of the community, and another resident of the community. The defendants, meaning Donald Carlos Sion, AKA Donnie Long specifically, most likely, went as far as to publish photographs of one of the resident's grandchildren and the defamatory and harassing posts on Facebook. Sounds a lot like what Donald Sion did with porn WikiLeaks, doesn't it? Sounds a lot like what he did in regards to the owners and the operators of the Daily Beast and many vids and me specifically. And oh, there's been so many people that he has done this to over the years that it's ridiculous. But again, it's interesting that Mark Randazza of Randazza Legal Group became his attorney, at least at the start of this case because Randazza has a history of representing online criminal trolls 
along the lines of Donald Sion. He did it with a white supremacist, a neo-Nazi. He represented the Satanic Temple. And they're known for being up to no good. And um, Alex Jones. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, someone could easily theorize that Mark Randazza trains these criminal trolls as to how to skate on the edges of legalities to target habitually a multitude of people who may be vulnerable individuals, private citizens. But let's continue here. Okay. Number eight, the defendants have admitted that defendant Donald created a fake Facebook profile in his wife's name entitled Nanny Keys because defendant Donald was previously banned from the Facebook platform for similar actions, actions stated herein. Defendant Nantita is believed to have access to the profile and may have contributed to the postings or allowed defendant Donald to continue using her name and likeness to perpetuate the smear campaign and illegal acts described herein. Yes, you know, a lot of people, I think, want to um, give Nantita the benefit of the doubt because she's a foreigner and she looks like a 12-year-old. But in actuality, she is a sophisticated con artist. Um, there are some telephone recordings of her talking. And just the um, tone and the meanness and her surprisingly, um, her surprising ability to be able to understand exactly what Donald is up to, it, it really makes you wonder exactly what is her grasp in actuality of the English language and how proficient is she in actuality when it comes to her technological expertise. Mm -hmm. She knows exactly what her husband is up to. That's very obvious. And they had those children, at least from my perspective, to use as human shields and to deflect from their criminal activity. Number nine. Defendants created at least two Facebook groups with the specific intent to threaten, cyberstalk, defame, and harass other community residents and plaintiffs' employees and harm the plaintiffs' reputation and business. Yep, same pattern, same pattern. Number 10, defendants have threatened to dot com the plaintiff, its employees, agents, and representatives, and other tenants within the community. Um, one thing I do want to note is that the attorney known as Brian Chase, who is representing the plaintiffs, may want to cite the website um, Adult FYI. Because as of today, it appears that Donald Sion posted um, some very defamatory statements about attorney Brian Chase on that site. Donald Sion tries to claim that a veteran adult industry blogger known as Gene Ross runs that site, but that is not true. Gene Ross has, had, has not had control of that site for many years now. The individuals in control of that site are Donald Sion, and um, there may be a few sex traffickers linked to organized crime who control that site as well. But definitely Donald Sion posts on that site. After said threat, defendants created the following domains and websites with the specific and malicious intent to threaten, cyberstalk, defame, and harass other community residents plaintiff's employees and harm the plaintiff's reputation and business. See, this is exactly what Sion did to um, the owners and operators of Minivids. Same exact thing. Defendants claimed responsibility for these domains and websites. So then they list all the domains. And when I edit this podcast, I will splice in a screenshot of this filing. That way you can all see just the havoc that he's wreaked on these poor people who um, own and operate this RV park. 
I mean, what was he trying to do? Get free rent? Maybe. I mean, from what I could see, his rent there was only about um, 800 a month. But I guess he couldn't afford it because we all know CL can't do much of anything unless it, um, it's attached to organized crime because his entire life, what has he been? A male prostitute and not a very good one. In this case, defendants have specifically stated the following. Quote, as for threats, I don't make threats. I make promises. And I'm headed to Facebook and review sites now, end quote, signed as Don and Nan. It's interesting that he's calling her Nan instead of Heather Deep nowadays. Very interesting. And then he puts Nan's email address. Here's another statement, quote, we are professional at these online libel games. Let the games begin, folks. Let the games begin. Anyone else want to be famous, write your name down below because this shit is about to start flying all over the internet. Mm. And if you want to learn more about Donald Sion, just make sure that you do visit famouscriminals.info. His history is on there. Quote, dot coms will be bought in open posting forums and wiki sites with blogs will be built, end quote. Quote, sun and fun is run by pedophiles, end quote. And quote, don't bring your kids here, end quote. And that's always his go-to, to accuse his targets of being pedophiles. He did that to uh, Mark Spiegler, an adult entertainment industry agent. Yes. You know, it's, inter it's very interesting that his attorney, Mark Randazza, or not his attorney currently, but at least his advisor, represents and defends pedophiles. I've theorized for years that Sion is projecting and that in actuality, he is what he accuses others of being. All right, here he says that he's a search engine expert and has been doing this all his life. Well, not all his life. Most of his life, he has been a male sex worker, a male prostitute known as Donnie Law. Quote, we are going to attach online everyone around you and connect it to you in any way also. End quote. Well, that's exactly what he did with the criminal homophobic misogynistic and racist hate crime porn WikiLeaks quote we are sue proof so let's now play internet games and see who wins end quote quote racist pedophile and then he names one of the people attached to Sun and Fun but Donald Sion is the racist how many years has he been labeling African Americans such as myself monkeys How many times has he been um, videotaped screaming out the N-word? He's the racist. Quote, pedophile CEO, and he names one of his targets, quote, money laundering, scams, fraud, sun communities, sun RV resorts, sun communities exposed, end quote. Quote. He has sexually harassed countless women. He is a bully stalker and loves to harass and bully people. This petition, so he made a petition to go after the people claiming these things. All right. So he, so th there's quite a few things. Um, I'm not going to read all of them, but I will put them into the podcast when I edit this later. In fact, defendant Donald went so far as to call the undersigned plaintiff's counsel Brian Chase, Esquire, and threatened to dot com him as a quote child rapist simply for representing the plaintiff in supporting the boat notice. So this all seems to have initially come to a boat notice, but I have a feeling that Sion had been scoping out this RV park looking for weaknesses and whatnot. 
for quite a while because that's what he does. Any industry, any sphere he goes into, he looks for weaknesses, collects information, probably uses his wife to do it. She probably looks like a sweet little innocent girl. Everyone opens up to her. She collects the information. They catalog all of it and then, you know, use that information to try to blackmail or extort the targets. All right. It's a, it's a con. It's a, it's a scam. And there's a lot of people doing this kind of extortion racket, okay? It's becoming less popular now because of the internet. People are documenting. In addition to foregoing electronic and written publications, the defendants have engaged in increasingly aggressive and confrontational physical acts against the plaintiff. Such rapid escalation of defendant Donald's aggressive behavior coupled with his civil and criminal background have severely distressed the plaintiff's employees, agents, and representatives and other residents of the community, all of whom are scared, intimidated, and frightful of the explosive and unpredictable nature of defendant Donald. Other residents in the community have already expressed their intent to the plaintiff to move out of the community solely due to the defendant's actions and online publications, thereby causing damages to the plaintiff due to lost business and terminations of other landlord-tenant relationships. Number 17, accusing the plaintiff and its employees, agents, and representatives of being rapists, child rapists, racists, perpetrators of sexual assault, and committing other crimes serves no legitimate purpose other than to smear plaintiff's reputation, harm the plaintiff's business, and harass and defame the plaintiff, its employees, agents, and representatives. Number 18, virtually each post includes a threat that the defendants will not only continue posting to numerous other websites, but will do so as part of a, quote, game end quote, to smear and tarnish their reputation and business. And again, you got to wonder, has Randazza taught Sion how to more effectively do this than he did in the past? I think he did, but that's just my opinion. Number eight, I'm sorry, number 19. Collectively, the foregoing acts described in paragraphs 7 through 16 shall be referred to herein as the prohibited acts. Number 20. Defendant Donald has a history of carrying out these threats as recently as two months ago in May 2020, as evidenced by WIPO Arbitration and Medi Mediation Center case number D2020-0683. I hadn't read this in here before, but yeah, I was just saying before that the attorney, Brian Chase, needs to approach WIPO when it, when it comes to the domain that um, Sion registered in bad faith to try to tarnish his reputation. Administrative panel decision whereby Defendant Donald created several scandalous and harassing domains with the specific intent to harm the business and reputation of the complainant. Number 21, a simple Google search of Defendant Donald's name reveals countless other eerily similar stories from other victims of Defendant Donald stalking them and publishing harassing publications. It is apparent that Defendant Donald has established a pattern of behavior and course of conduct with virtually anyone who challenges him or attempts to enforce any rules, laws, or contracts against him. He belongs behind bars or in a white jacket in a mental institution. So basically, what these people are going to have to try to do is get an injunction against Sion so that he gets out of their park because they are losing tenants due to Sion's issues and criminal behavior um, and they are owed some money but you know I I think that 
really the plaintiffs should also probably file a case against Randazza because Randazza, there is proof of Randazza having communicated with and advised Sion for a substantial amount of time when it comes to his online antics. Randazza should be a defendant in this case. Maybe that's why he um, decided to remove himself from the case because he knew that at some point the defend I'm sorry, the plaintiffs and their attorney would probably come to terms with that and realize that. Without a doubt, these people are gonna win. And um, there's definitely going to be some criminal consequences that Sion faces upon this because his pattern, his pattern is so trackable at this phase and he's done so much damage. But um, in the exhibits, the exhibits are really an interesting read. That is what people really need to look at, which is why I will repost this. I mean, this dude, he was writing all kinds of horrible things on his black Lincoln navigator, you know, calling people in the communities, in this community pedos. I mean, this is like a repeat of what he did to Mark Spiegler of Spiegler Girls. It's crazy. He even still seems to have the same um, SUV as his days as a uh, male prostitute. Same car. <laughs> Living in the past. Living in the past. Damn. So, um, yeah. Look for PNT Live tomorrow. Again, at the same time. Hopefully the internet will be a bit more stable tomorrow. And we'll continue going over this case because I guess what we'll touch on next is Randazza's departure from the case and what he had to say about it. All right, so take care, everyone. Have a good night and um, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Alex Mayers Live. <laughs>